welcome to Science Never Stops. I'm your host, Joseph Vick, with the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. And this video series, we're going to be exploring each of the planets in our solar system. We're going to be discovering what it would be like to discover our gravity, our weights, on each one of the planet's surfaces. So, to do that, I encourage you to grab your pen or pencil, your lab journal, and come along with me and we're going to discover facts about each planet and do a little math along the way. So let's go exploring. Now I saved the best planet for last. Uh, men have been looking up in the night sky and seeing the red dot as we know Mars since ancient times. The ancient Egyptians looking up and seeing that red dot and seeing it move across the night sky and the fascination of the red planet began. Even as early as the beginnings of NASA in the mid-1960s, they were sending space probes to observe our really close red neighbor friend. The potential planet that could also have at one time possessed life as Earth does now. It has awesome geologic features. It has the largest volcano, volcano mountain in the entire solar system named Olympus Mons, which is two and a half times bigger than Mount Everest on Earth. It's a shield volcano, meaning it's sort of spread out along the ground like a shield is flat, and its roundabout shield would cover the entire state of Arizona if you set it on a map. It's also known for a region called Valles Marineris, uh, the Valley of the Mariners, which is a canyonous feature very much like on Earth our Grand Canyon out west. But unlike our Grand Canyon, it is much bigger, much deeper at 10 times the length and 10 times the depth and width and takes up two thirds of the entire surface of Mars, which is the equivalent of Valles Marineris starting at the east coast of the United States and stretching all the way across to the west coast of the United States. That big of a feature on a planet half the size or a quarter or one third the size of planet Earth. So fascinating features and men have been writing about Mars, science fiction and little green men coming from Mars to Earth. It is one of man's most fascinating planets and one day we will set foot on Mars. Don't know when, don't know where, but mankind will put their footstep, just like mankind did on the moon, on the surface of Mars. But until then, we will have an entirely inhabited planet of robots and rovers with curiosity, spirit, opportunity, sojourner, and soon to be the Mars 2020 rover Perseverance, named after a space camp alum. So that's our favorite planet, and let's calculate as an astronaut what it would be like to walk on its rocky surface, how much we would weigh. So how much would we weigh on the red planet? So we have calculated here our mass for planet Earth being 100. We're solving for weight, so we're solving for x equals mass of 100 times the surface gravity, so it is a third of the Earth gravity, so 0 0.38. And let's solve for weight. 100, move the decimal over, multiplication, you would weigh 38 newtons or pounds if you were an astronaut on the surface of Mars. Now for a planetary discovery in 1930. Clyde Tombaugh was an astronomer that looked out deep into our solar system past Neptune and discovered a movement that was not recorded before. So he continued to study and then found in 1930 was a new planet. That new planet was named Pluto because of it being so far out and keeping in line with the Greco-Roman pantheon of naming planets, Pluto being the god of the underworld, cold and dark. 
The only image that could be gathered from it was a very small pixelated dot, or a few dots. And it wasn't until recently we had a new probe called New Horizons that discovered what Pluto really looks like. It did a flyby and it discovered a rich, beautiful, terrestrial planet covered in ice and mountainous and had a beautiful heart-shaped fan called the Tombaugh Regio, or Tombaugh Region, after the founder of the planet. Uh, it also had a light rusty color, just like the other planet in this video, Mars, but for a different reason, Mars being covered in iron oxide and not sure exactly what Pluto was covered in to give us that reddish hue that we saw with those New Horizons photographs. Now, one of the things of location with Pluto is it's very close to another region like planet Mars is close to a region called the asteroid belt. Now, past the orbit of Neptune, you have an area called the Kuiper Belt, where you have objects, one of those objects being dwarf planet Pluto. There are various other dwarf planets past and within the Kuiper Belt, but Pluto happens to be the most popular of them. In 2006, there was a reclassification of what is a planet, and Pluto, being of its discovery in 1930 classified as a planet, was now renamed a dwarf planet. And one of the main contributors to that scientific reclassification, because with science, it changes. And that's an important step in scientific discovery once new facts and new data is gathered. The scientific community can change its theories and minds on what science is. That's the great thing about science. There was a, an astronomer named Dr. Mike Brown, a Huntsville native, uh, that discovered various movement past Pluto and various other objects, some objects even larger than Pluto in the Kuiper Belt. And upon noting the movement of Pluto, noting its size, its relationship with its uh, various moon systems, that it was deemed not stable enough to hold its gravitational pull over the planets and stabilize itself in a planetary movement that dignified itself enough to be a planet. So it was reclassified as a dwarf planet, still a planet, but a dwarf planet in different classification of what is a planet. Other planets, there are asteroids in our asteroid belt very close to us that are considered dwarf planets as well, so the classification is just another name. Pluto is still near and dear to our hearts, and even more beautiful with the recent discovery from New Horizons. And with discoveries, they continue to be among us. So with that, if we were to have the opportunity to travel all the way to Pluto, because we heart Pluto, what would we weigh on this rocky surfaced, very deep space Kuiper Belt object, dwarf planet? So our mass here that we calculated earlier on Earth would be 100. We're solving for weight. We have X equals 100 times, and the surface gravity of Pluto, it being very, very small, is 0. 0, 7. The smaller the object, the smaller the pool of gravity. So, solving for weight, so 100 times 0 .007, move that decimal, that would make us weigh 7 newtons, or pounds, on the surface of Pluto. And remember, no matter how far you explore, no matter how much you discover, know that you are important and that no matter where you are at whatever time science never stops <laughs>